Hello, hello, more demons here, and welcome again to the second game of the Opera Euro Rapid Quarter Finals. Um, again, I would like to show you, of course, Magnus Carlsen and Daniel Dubov game. I just promise you in the in the part before. So Magnus Carlsen with the black pieces and Daniel Dubov opens with d4. We have knight f6, we have c4, we have e6, we have knight f3, we have we don't have d5. This time Magnus didn't go for d5, didn't go for bishop before. These moves are uh, well known. c5 also is possible here. But Magnus went for the Queen's Indian defense, b6. Uh, and now how to answer uh, with the white pieces. The best move which was invented in uh, 1920s uh, by Akiba Rubinstein uh, is actually nowadays G3. So it's still, you know, uh, the best move, the best answer uh, by white. Uh, we have bishop b7, we have bishop g2, uh, and now bishop b4. So this is Capablanca variation. Capablanca found the idea how to play against this Rubinstein um, idea of bishop g2, uh, countering the bishop on this longest diagonal. Uh, we have bishop d2 by Daniel Dubov and now c5. So attacking the center, defending also the bishop. Uh, bishop b4, c takes on b4, and now white has a quite nice center and will want to go for the e4 pretty soon. Uh, we have the castle, we have the castle, uh, and now knight b2, d2, preparing, of course, e4 in the future. It's not possible yet, and is, as you see, this bishop is a, is a really strong uh, controller of the e4, together, of course, with the knight. Uh, we have a5, so stabilizing the position on the on the queen side we have rook e1 now supporting e4 move uh, and here we have d6 preparing this e4 and continuation and also making a space for the knight um, so e4 as planned and now big surprise because if you think that Magnus Carlsen prepare the space for this knight that's not the case here because this move is not even in the databases nowadays in the 21st century because after e5 black gonna have a lot of trouble so for example d takes on e5 d takes on e5 knight g4 trying to attack this pawn but it can be easily defended uh, and also later black gonna have the problems on the uh, on the king side of course h3 is coming this knight will have to uh, go back and so on and this pawn is definitely narrowing all the position on the king side and uh, it's it's very often a um, very annoying pawn uh, especially if white want to construct the attack on the on the king side so nobody plays that nowadays but rather knight f to d7 which looks very very weird but this is the part of the theory we have queen e2 and now we have e5 uh, challenging the pawn on d4 however this pawn is not going to advance to d5 uh, but rather stay here so first we have rook a to d1 so this rook gonna be the defender uh, of course doesn't make any sense to take it uh, this is why we have knight c6 now attacking this pawn twice uh, and now we have knight f1 this position was rich at least once uh, and the uh, only move here for the black is actually queen c7 now queen c7 magnus didn't go for queen c7 but why uh because this knight to f1 uh, is actually heading to d5 with the tempo on the queen which looks um a bit you know squishy for black however after knight e3 uh rook a to d8 everything is fine with this position so even if the knight for example jumps to d5 the queen can just move here we have already connected the rooks uh, and the queen is not so vulnerable and still is watching at the position here on this diagonal so uh it's a little bit you know passive position but you know uh this is this is black usually if you play with the black you have to uh, accept that your position sometimes can be a little bit crampy like like in this case magnus went for more active move queen f6 however the engine completely dislikes this move um not easy to figure out why however we can just you know see what um, daniel dubov played in this position so of course knight e3 as planned that was the plan uh, we have knight d4, we have knight d4, e takes on d4, and now this is the critical moment of the game. 
where white can just simply build the advantage and play the best move in the position knight f5 uh, attacking this pawn uh, so white gonna you know get the pretty much good advantage of this isolated two pawns and it's very difficult to do for black anything here probably knight c5 but then of course rook d4 and so on and the game can continue but white have a really really beautiful um, and strong position and extra pawn which is not easy to actually you know win back so white would have a very very nice position however daniel dubo feels like he he needs some adventures especially after he won uh in some style maybe dubious style because magnus just blundered the game which you know after the opening he did really really great However, here Daniel Dubov went for e5. Now, what is this move? Uh, he attacks the queen, so definitely black has to do something about that. But at the same time, this bishop is undefended. So this is pretty tricky. Of course, black is not just like, you know, losing the piece because uh, this knight is still under attack. But now a lot of calculations are required. So how would you, for example, in this position, take this pawn? What would you play uh, in this position? Because moving the queen, of course, doesn't make much sense. However, what would you play here? If you take with the pawn, which looks like, OK, this is this is pretty cool. However, the problem is now knight g4 knight g4 you have to move the queen wherever doesn't really matter and now we're gonna have bishop b7 and what just happened is yes white just won one piece so one piece extra of course is enough to win the game this is not even possible so uh maybe knight e5 it looks like much better because after bishop b7 d takes on e3 the problem is now we can have f4 just to avoid uh you know any moves like this uh now what to do with the with the knight do something with the knight or maybe because now the rook is under attack so maybe we should just care about the bishop the problem is that after f takes on e5 everything looks pretty good but again queen is under attack and the bishop gonna retreat so there is no time to move the queen because white gonna have one extra piece so in this case black have to um, give back the, the pawn here queen f2 e takes on f2 with the check king f2 and only then take the bishop the problem is that after e takes on d6 white have completely winning position here maybe the material is completely equal but look at this pawn this is past pawn uh, it's already supported the the rook can come already to e7 there is not much black can do about that so you cannot do that uh, magnus uh, took with the queen and this is the best move in the position he's still in the game uh, we have bishop b7 of course and now uh we have rook a7 attacking the bishop and also attacking still attacking the knight uh but here daniel dubov went for queen g4 so i would last, like to ask you again what would you play in this position this is another tricky position it's good to actually you know uh, train a bit your uh, your gray cells in your brain if you take the bishop the problem is that after knight d5 your queen is trapped believe me or not but the queen is trapped there is no squares for the queen uh it's attacked all over here uh the knight controlling f6 and all of these squares are covered by the queen so this is this is you know completely losing so you cannot take the bishop on b7 uh from the other hand if you take uh here there is another problem because now queen d7 and the bishop is defended this is the problem uh you can deliver some check but it doesn't really matter if you even deliver another check win two pawns uh but at the end you have to move the queen and white gonna have you know one extra piece again so that's not even possible now it's enough if if white play a uh, queen c6 even queen d6 is more is possible in this um uh, in this situation however i don't want to spoiler uh you know what's gonna happen in the game uh, however magnus found the best move in the position he played knight f6 so again the the really good chess a really good game so far uh, attacking the queen 
So the queen goes to d4, getting back the material. Uh, finally, we have rook b7. Now there are no traps anymore. Uh, and now we have queen d6. So Daniel Dubov, what he did, he just get back uh, both of the pawns. So the material is completely equal. And now what would you play uh, with the black pieces now? This is interesting question, but the only move uh, where Magnus is still in the game is actually moving the queen, actually taking the queen, exchanging the queen. This is the best in the position because now after rook d6, he still can continue the game here. Let's say rook e8, rook e to d1. Of course, white have much better position, much more active pieces, double the rook on the d file. The rook is coming, for example, to d8 to, to exchange, probably rook b to b8 and so on. But still, white uh, have really, really great position here. The rook is babysitting the pawn on b6 uh, and so on. So much more active position. Uh, white have slightly better, but definitely some advantage. Probably Magnus would have a chance to actually defend that position. This is rapid time control control and the advantage is not so huge but activity is really really nice here however magnus went for a very adventurous mod and he played queen b2 winning the pawn and also maybe winning another pawn and creating the past pawn so it looks like very very dangerous but now daniel dubov answer very very strong we have rook d2 attacking the queen and now this position is already very difficult for black there are two choices only this queen is almost trapped so the queen can come to a3 or c3 now uh, queen c3 looks like you know much better move uh, closer to the center still keeping an eye on the on the knight which is quite important uh, but what would happen if queen a3 is played which actually is much better move so first and all the very dangerous move is knight g4 knight g4 look at this it looks like you know giving the knight for free but what is the deal here because if the knight is taken then of course we're gonna have the queen sacrifice here and rook d8 delivers the checkmate so the knight couldn't be taken here this knight would have to move otherwise of course exchanging and uh, black would not have this pawn and probably would lose very very fast so knight e8 would have to be played uh, but then queen d8 the knight is attacked twice and now how to defend the knight uh, you see the queen on a3 there is possibility to defend this way so uh, that's very very interesting but of course white has still you know all the initiative for example queen g5 and attacking the king's position from the front uh, so let's say rook b8 just to cover this this d8 square so another rook uh, cannot come here and let's say knight h6 king uh, h8 knight f5 and there is a lot of pressure for example now on g7 so definitely white has a lot of initiative probably rook would join the the party here then another rook and so on so very dangerous position for the black but that's all black actually could achieve however magnus went for queen c3 and believe me or not this is losing move this is losing move it's much more uh you know logical however this is losing so you can pause the video right now and try to find the winning move for white while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so if you pay attention what we just did uh, and if you think okay knight g4 this is good move i have a bad news for you this knight does completely nothing here of course black doesn't need to take now because the queen is still covering the knight so can play something like rook b to b8 just to cover uh you know the the eight rank uh, and just continue and even if white uh, actually double the pawns here it doesn't really matter here uh yes these pawns are pretty ugly however black has a better position now believe me or not this is much better this pawn doesn't have any support it's gonna probably fall and black gonna have these three pawns against one pawn uh, and that's gonna be devastating very difficult um, to play by white from the other hand, uh, these ugly pawns doesn't really matter as the kings are still on the king side. So shouldn't be any problem. But the winning move uh, is actually knight d1. Really, this is the, this is the move uh, which was played. And now the point is 
that the queen cannot escape anywhere because wherever the queen goes doesn't really matter you already see what's gonna happen because i show you that uh queen f8 with the check wins the game so king f8 and now we're gonna have rook d8 uh, and of course the checkmate coming so the queen cannot be moved this is why magnus carlsen try rook e8 quite sneaky idea however a very simple continuation now uh rook e8 queen d8 was also possible here uh but daniel dubov play the the less spectacular way rook e8 very simple knight e8 and after knight c3 magnus carlsen resigned and why did he resign he resigned because now he has to take the the queen the problem is that after rook d6 we're gonna have the weak 8 rank so black has to do something for example g6 and then white gonna have the time to move the knight so let's say knight d5 whatever and it's completely winning with one extra piece of course it's winning by white so this is why after knight c3 uh magnus carlsen resigned what a move this move knight d1 was just incredible step back but that was actually the winning move congratulations if you found it uh, this was just incredible move and i would like to of course show you um, the knockout bracket what just happened in the quarterfinals magnus carlsen lost 2-0 i show you two games where magnus carlsen lost uh, two and a half to two half uh, first game was uh, was a draw so Daniel Dubov equalized and then they played the blitzes, uh, which were not enough to determine the winner. And then we had Armageddon where Magnus Carlsen won with the white pieces, but that was uh, winning by time. So he was extremely disappointed by his performance in the second day of the quarterfinals. Daniel Dubov was also disappointed uh, that he lost on time with the black pieces he needed just a draw the position wasn't so dramatic but but yeah he just was a uh, slightly too slow and uh, magnus carlsen in the semi-finals where he gonna play against maxime vachiel lagraf in the second mini match maxime and Levon aronian just drew the game but that was enough for maxime to advance wesley saw one two zero uh this was this looked like very very easy uh against the anxious of duda that just very very confident uh won and he advanced and he gonna meet in the semi-finals against Tamur rajabov uh who also draw against anish giri uh but at the end one and a half to half uh, so one of the games he managed to win actually against Anish Giri. So Taimur Rajabov, Wesley So and Magnus Carlsen against Maxime Vachiel Lagraf. So if you like this video, press like if for some reason you don't like it, press a like. And if you don't want to miss another games from Opera Euro Rapid 2021, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.